This lesson shows you a couple of more approaches to tag handlers. There are ways of passing argument strings to the handler so the argument values can be used in formatting the output to the page. Now it's up to the handler how the values are interpreted. These examples just show them being used as text for display. This is a library named DemoLib, and it's a bit more of a library than the one in the previous lesson because this one contains two tag definitions. This is the first tag. It's named Category, and its handler is named com.vtc.category. And you can see that this tag has three attributes. Each attribute has a name. Their category name, item one, and item two. Now these names will be important later because they will appear in the JSP file and in the Java class itself. You can require that the attributes be specified in the JSP code. But as you can see, none of these three are actually required. This means that they'll all have default values and a default action in the tag handler. There is also a setting for the RTEXPR value. In this example, the first one is false and the other two are true. Now, as you'll see in the JSP code, attributes are normally set to a quoted string value. But if the RTEXPR value is true, you can use an expression to set the value. The name stands for runtime expression value. You can use an expression that is evaluated at runtime to set it. I don't do any of that in these examples. It's just sort of the flexibility that's there if you need it. This second tag entry is a little simpler, but it is very different. It doesn't have any attributes, but it does have a tag named body content. The content of this tag is either set to JSP, as you see here, or it's set to the keyword tag dependent. It doesn't have any effect on what we're doing here, but you can use this tag dependent setting to notify an IDE that something other than regular JSP or HTML text is being used inside the body of the tag definition in the JSP file. Okay, let's take a look at the JSP file. You can see here by the top line that the demo lib set of tags can be addressed by the prefix DEM. Here you can see that the category tag is used three times. The first time all three attributes are set to string values. The category is set to animal and the two animals named as the items are cat and moose. The second time the category tag is used none of the attributes are specified. You'll remember in the TLD file that none of the attributes were listed as being required. If any of them were required, you wouldn't be able to do this. The third time the category tag is used, only one of the attributes is specified. All the attributes work independently, and as long as they are not required, you can specify or not specify whichever ones you want. This is the reverse tag. Notice that the syntax is a bit different. Instead of the same tag being used as the beginning and ending, this one has two separate tags with some text stuck in the middle. This text in the middle is read and used by the tag handler to produce the output. It can be as simple or as complex a block of text as you like. Now let's look at the code in the tag handlers.